Hello and welcome, you're listening to Metal Verbalizers, and I am you one and today I will verbalize the band Mindistry, uh, not to be confused with the band called Ministry, uh, this is Mindistry. Uh, Mindustry is a thrash metal band from Sweden, founded in 2019 by Gustav, who is currently the only official member of the band. Uh, he had been previously active in, in uh, several other uh, local uh, Gothenburg bands, uh, such as for example the band Insanity, uh, another band called Chaos Black, and among a few other. Uh, but later he decided to start writing more material on his own, uh, and uh, which eventually uh, resulted in, in him starting Mindustry. Uh, when it comes to the band's influences, the first ones that, uh, that actually both Gustav mentioned and that I personally thought of uh, were definitely uh, a band called uh, Raubtir, uh, and also another Swedish band called uh, Knogjärn. And also another band that uh, that Gustav mentioned uh, was uh, Creator, be being a very big influence for the band. Uh, so so basically, I, I would kind of like say that if you're a fan of an any of those bands, uh, maybe especially stuff like Raubtir, uh, and and uh, if you like the kind of like uh, uh, how you say like the, the heavier side of thrash. Uh, that that isn't necessarily like super fast, but it can like go in for a more uh, heavy approach uh, on on the kind of like thrash metal sound. Uh, if you're into that kind of stuff, I, I would highly highly encourage you uh, to check out my industry because I'm I'm sure that it would be definitely your thing. The image isn't something that my industry puts that much attention to at all. It seems. Uh, the closest to an image, I suppose, uh, is that uh, Gustav explained that Mindustry uh, is using uh, a lot of camouflage uh, on stage, you know, for for the kind of like live performances. Uh, and and I would I would I would guess it's something along the lines uh, of uh, of how uh, Rautir is using, uh, you know, camouflage and how they are usually dressed on stage. Uh, that's at least what I would kind of like. That, that's kind of what I envision uh, when 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 uh, Gustav explained it to me. And and also, you know, c considering considering that Rautir is indeed uh, one one of uh, my industry's uh, main influences, as as Gustav explained, uh, it it wouldn't be so far fetched to kind of like assume that that kind of like uh, camouflage thing. With like uh, wearing camouflage on stage, is is very influenced uh, uh, by Raubtier as well. Regarding the album covers that my industry currently has, uh, there isn't really any deep meaning or so it seems, uh, and and that it's like uh, uh, the way that these were made was pretty much uh, Gustav uh, brainstorming you, you know ideas and such in uh, Photoshop. And and eventually uh, finding something and coming up with an idea that that he liked and and thought looked pretty cool, uh, and then kind of like just went for it, you know. Uh, there are of course a lot of bands with with album covers that have a very deep meaning uh, and stuff like that, uh, which I which I love as well. But but I think uh, it's kind of like. I think that there is a certain charm, you know, with with, with doing it like. Uh, like Gustav did with uh, Mindustry. Uh, I, I don't know, it's like, kind of hard to explain it, I suppose, but, but but it kind of, to me it feels like this could result in the album covers kind of feeling a little bit more spontaneous and, and almost a little bit genuine, if you kind of understand what I mean. Anyway, I, I can definitely see the point with, with the kind of both approaches, with a more like uh, deep meaning album cover, uh, or doing something along the lines that my industry is doing, but it kind of like more spontaneous approach. Uh, I, I again, as I said, I can definitely see the charm with uh, both uh, approaches. 
And overall, something that I would like to add here is that uh, I believe that Minus Three's album covers are very cool. Uh, you, you know, co not, not the least considering that they are made in that kind of, you know, spontaneous way. It's really cool uh, when, when you're looking at them. Uh, you, you know, such as the album cover for, for the, for the uh, single Katastrof Tankar, for example. Uh, it looks like uh, it looks like a wolf head or something, uh, but the bottom half uh, from the nose and down is is like a skeleton. Uh, you should check it out because I, I think that this is very cool. Uh, it's a very cool looking picture, uh, and I love the concept. You know, when 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 it comes to metal imagery, the skull is pretty much always always pretty much guaranteed to work. You know. Uh, and I love it when, when bands are kind of like uh, using the skull, but kind of doing something more with it, you know, uh, kind of like making a mix of it in some way. Like it's not just a skull, but it's like a, a skull, but it's kind of like implemented into the picture in kind of a more more, uh, more interesting way with the lack of better words for it, uh, I suppose. Uh, that is like not just a skull, but for example with my industry it's not just a skull but it's like a skull and then something else with like the wolf head and all uh, and and that's something i think is really cool and and something that really caught my attention uh when i when i checked out uh, my industry for this episode uh, so you should definitely pay attention to that as well uh when you're checking out my industry which i of course highly encourage you to do uh, and, and also, uh, when I asked uh, about the lyrical themes of my industry, uh, Gustav answered uh, pretty much uh, heaven, hell, and everything in between. Uh, on the first record, the songs are about themes such as uh, such as song uh, Madrum, for example, uh, which is about uh, the movie uh, Evil Dead 2. Uh, and, uh, and another example uh, could be, for example, uh, the song uh, UMLB uh, being about uh, you, you know kind of like how politicians are basically disregarding the common people uh, and how they do it for, for pretty much like their own economic uh, personal gain you know uh, li like that kind of theme uh, the songs on the co coming record uh, the second one uh, seem like they will take a little bit different approach from the first one uh, and and that they will handle more more themes such as uh, history and uh, war and 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 also movies uh, and and things like that. So so it seems to like maybe we'll take a similar approach, but not quite the same. Uh, I I suppose we'll we'll know for sure uh, when that album is released. And speaking of when that album is uh, released. Uh, Gustav seemed like he's very excited for the future of my industry, and for very good reason. Uh, the band seemed to have a lot planned for the near future. One of the plans is to play as much live as possible, uh, and also to release new music very soon, uh, which I mentioned earlier uh, with the coming album. Uh, in 2023, it is planned to present a full lineup uh, for my industry. Uh, as well as releasing the band's second full-length album. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, that uh, currently my industry is basically a kind of uh, one-man band, uh, but uh, hopefully in 2023 we will actually be able to see a full lineup uh, for the band. Uh, because uh, if I understand things correctly, uh, my industry is not actually meant to be like a, a one-man thing uh, and that uh, in 2023 it is uh, at least planned that the band will indeed get a, a full lineup uh, so that's something that uh, I, I'm looking forward to and and I think it's going to be pretty interesting to see how the band uh, will, will change or like how how it will be affected, if it will be affected, uh, with, with having a full lineup and like a like an actual, you know, full band lineup uh, compared to how it is now when it's basically a, a one-man thing. Uh, 
so again, I suppose that's something we'll uh, see see more about in the future. And actually something else that is pretty interesting is that Gustav is actually already writing demos uh, for album 3 and 4. Uh, so the band has a lot going on right now. Uh, and you should definitely keep your eyes open for all of this. Um, and, and you know, I, th- I think they can like... The 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 um, the fact that he's already writing uh, demos for for not only the the next album after the one is about to be released, but also the next one after that. It it kind of like shows that that Mindustry is really looking, you know, uh, at the future, and you know that there's going to be a lot coming, uh, and a lot of things going to happen. Uh, surrounding this band and and as I, as I mentioned earlier uh, not the least because of this but also because of all the other reasons as well uh, you should absolutely check this band out and and you should uh, you should keep your eyes on this band because I'm sure that this band is going to be able to do a lot of great in the coming future but with that being said I believe that it's time to wrap this up uh, I appreciate you listening and uh, if you like this episode, then make sure to follow us at Metal Verbalizers, and we will make sure to keep giving you more episodes like this one. Uh, if this episode will result in you checking this band out, then please tag us and let us know. Uh, we would appreciate it a lot, and it is indeed a great way to both support us uh, and also uh, the bands that we're speaking about. We will be back to you soon with another verbalization.